You know, since I can't see, just kill me from the window there. I'll just turn and face the camera. <sighs> Hello and welcome, Ed. Hello and welcome, everyone. It's... Should I start? <laughs> Hello and welcome everyone. It's 35 days until the May 29 inauguration, of course, for the president-elect and 30 governors-elect across the Federation for States where elections took place during the 2023 general elections. Uh, well, we would, in, uh, or rather in anticipation of that day and in anticipation of public service that both the president-elect and inclusive of the governors-elect would be embarking on come May, come May 29, we will be gauging their preparedness to hit the ground running and how they intend to carry out these, these tasks of leadership. Well, we will be back. Ah, no, no, sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm looking up. <coughs> Countdown from 40 minutes. Let me take it from the top again. Mm -hmm. Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Namdi Odipo and this is the mandate. It's 35 days until the May 29 inauguration day for the president-elect and for 30 governors-elect across the federation where elections took place. Well, in anticipation of that day and what is expected of those we've elected as our leaders, we will be helping you on behalf of Nigerians across the Federation to gauge their readiness to either ground running in terms of what they prepared for the electorate and for the citizens general, generally. Welcome to the mandate. Then we we'll roll and roll and roll and roll. Then we'll come back. Tonight, we will be aiming for the big one, and by that, I mean for the president itself, and of course, for the president-elect, uh, with regards to how much so he is preparing for the transition. Like we did say, it is just 35 more days, and then the president-elect formally becomes the president upon swearing in, but as swearing in to be um, as the president, of course. Tonight, I have someone who is a regular on the NCA, has been to our program, our pre-election program, the ballot, and now post-election, is back here to tell us just how much so the president-elect is ready to hit the ground running. I'm talking about Ayobami or Yellow or former, or rather not former, member of the Media and Publicity Directorate of the APC-PCC, now defunct, I should say, uh, is now being formally dissolved and has now translated to the 14-man um, transition committee. Welcome to the program, Ayo. Thank you for having me. Good evening, Nigerians. Well, like I just, um, like I just inferred a couple of seconds ago, the APC PCC has now formally translated or transited rather to becoming a 14-man transition committee. In terms of preparedness, uh, when it comes to uh, the part of the president-elect, now what does this speak to in constituting a 14-man and uh, transition committee? And of course, also in terms of the quality of persons chosen, and also in terms of um, what it speaks to when you look at the issue of inclusive, inclusive, inclusivity. I beg your pardon. What does this all say uh, when you put it together and you gauge uh, the president-elect's and preparedness come May 29? Um, thank you, Munamdi. One of the first things in terms of inclusivity that you can see in that uh, committee is the youthfulness of the committee. I think about 10 of them in that committee are either under 50 or even 40 in terms of age. So it tells you, like I have told people in some other platform, that uh, this presidency will be youth-centric because uh, Asiwaju, in terms of his um, antecedent, is someone who believes in young people. He believes in grooming and uh, nurturing younger people. Um, we can see his footprint everywhere from the uh, current Minister of uh, Works and Housing to the current Minister of uh, Interior to the, um, the DG of the uh, 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 Mr. Kabweze, that's DG of... Uh, Sorry, just went off my head, uh, but we, we, we all know who I'm talking about. Yes. Now, to the current governor of Lagos State himself, who was um, 
first and uh, special I, I advisor. Death, death, management death management office. management office. Thank you. Now, now to the current governor of Lagos State, who was an SA to become a commissioner. And so, so it tells you he always grooms young people. And like I said, from the committee that you have seen, the 14-man committee, is it 14 or 13? 13, I think actually. I think it's 13. And um, all of them, apart from three of them, were uh, very, very young people. So Asiwaju will work with young people and he will groom them. And in terms of um, preparedness, mm. it tells you also that uh, he's in town now and uh, we believe that uh, hopefully we will now have maybe an enlarged committee for the transition, which will also uh, have some subcommittees and then there will be a lot of inclusivity. And we know that um, he has told us, and I believe him, that um, He's a man who will hit the ground running using the catchphrase that we are used to in Nigeria. But clearly, I told some people in another platform today that Asiwaju is a man who is prepared for this office, so there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh, so you, you you know what they say about um, leadership, but then when, when they tie it to uh, to knowledge, they, they say knowledge is the very foundation of good leadership. So we're past campaigning now. Definitely. Your, your, your principal, the president-elect, is being trust into this massive role, you know, where he has to take and um, make far-reaching decisions on key matters, well thought out, you know, a process, going through a well thought out a process. And um, w w when you look at the, the, the massive development challenges that, uh, you know, that confronts our nation, and then he has to take uh, key decisions, like I did say, well thought out on certain key critical matters as well. Uh, do you think, and now in terms of his intellect, that, that's what I mean, uh, do you think he's at that place, and please do not take me back to his days in Lagos, uh, I mean, he, um, APC and his spokesperson and proxies are actually used to referencing his time as governor of Lagos State, and I mean now, in the present, in the current, um, do you think he's at that place where he is um, emotionally, emotively and psychologically and you know, balanced and prepared for the tax side. Okay, if you say we shouldn't go back to Lagos, you always judge a man from his past. And like I always also say, if Namdi wants to live NTA today, uh, you want to go to maybe CNN or wherever, what will you present? Is it not your CV of what you've done here? But yes, but let's but talk they, about this. They'll judge me on what I can offer now. Let's not talk, about the, let's, let's, let's talk about the present Please, like thank you, you want yes, to. Yes, yes. Aswaju has told Nigerians what he intends to do in most of the critical sector of our economy. Mm. If you look at the way he campaigned, unlike the normal jamboree that everybody does, you know, when you go for this rally, it's, it's typically jamboree. You don't make policy pronouncements at the campaign ground because most times it is just to rally the base, dine, I mean dance and, and energize the base. But we incorporated something very key into that campaign, which was the town hall meetings. Mm. If you followed our town hall meetings critically, you will realize that Asiwaju's plan was elucidated in this town hall. All of the town hall meetings were specific there were town hall meetings with corporate Nigeria. There were town hall meetings with manufacturers. There were town hall meetings with farmers, with miners, and so. So if, if you put all this together, a lot of policy pronouncements were made in those town hall meetings. And critically, those were areas where people could ask questions. You know, in campaign ground, you can't ask questions. People were able to ask questions. I remember one of the uh, town hall meetings where it was asked, on oil and gas, and a lot of things were exposed there. So in, in the current, this man is very, very current with international and um, global trend. He's ready, he's prepared, and with his training as, a, as, a, as an accountant and an, uh, who, who worked in some of the best blue chips company from uh, uh, Anderson, I mean, uh, said Anderson, sorry, um, Exxon Mobil. Uh, before Exxon Mobil, oh, okay. he worked at uh, Deloitte. Deloitte. From Deloitte to Exxon Mobil, this is a man who is prepared for both public, because you know, to succeed as a president in Nigeria, yes, it's a public sector thing, but you know you will need the private sector to drive the economy. And Asiwaju True. understand that area. Because clearly, most people make the mistake of thinking the government will do everything. But what government normally should do is to provide what you call an enabling environment. And you can only do that when you understand the need of the private sector. This is the experience that Asiwaju brings to the table, is understanding 
of the private sector. You know, when we talk in terms of experience as well, we can't deny the fact that politically he is a giant. I mean, I mean, winning the president, or rather winning the election, goes to show how much he understands the terrain and how much he understands the politics of Nigeria and just how good um, you know he, he is in that area as well uh, but then and when, when you look at some of what played out in the elections and in the immediate you know aftermath of the elections and they you know the the deep divides that the elections created the tension uh, that this that he created and then the clamor for healing and, you know, at this point in time, and just like both critics of the president-elect and the supporters would agree, Nigeria needs to come together at this point, especially at this key critical point of our political transition. In terms of healing process, what is the overture that the president-elect has shown so far since winning the elections? And just how much, how willing is he, I mean, just how much so is he willing to go in you know stretching out stretching out that end of fellowship to the other people on the other side of the divide uh, just so we just so it facilitates or engender this healing process uh, that we're talking about well uh while i i don't want to preempt him because i don't know what he intends to do the ones i can see and what i understand clearly is that um you know we are there were about 18 candidates mm -hmm. out of the 18 candidates uh, 16 of them are not making trouble. The one who even came second has said in a forum that if he's alive and well, by God's grace, he might see contest in 2027. That is if he lost in the court. That is a Democrat. Unlike somebody who has been going around disturbing the air, claiming that he lost and his mandate was stolen. You see, if people who lost do not heal, there's nothing as you can do. What Ashwaju can do is what he did. He extended the hands of fellowship that let's work together. Now, if somebody now refused, what can he do? Will you, you will beat him. You know, I'll, I'll, take you up, I'll take you up on this so issue you've just raised what? on the tribunal cases. Yeah, the, but no, can you speak specifically to the issue of healing now? And let's leave no, the for, political class. For healing, yes. what Ashwaju promised to do yes. is that um, he will have a broad-based government that comprise of not national unity, just bring everybody in, okay. but national competence. Which means if you are competent and you can deliver, there is a space for you. Okay. Because we do not want a jamboree, okay, national unity, just bring everybody so everybody can hear. No. But Nigeria also need healing in terms of economic diversification and all other areas. True. So you have to bring in what you call round pegs in round holes. You can't just do mishmash in the name of national healing and bring everybody. So what Nigerians should expect is that there will be a government that is yes. competent and that will bring in people who knows what they are doing, who knows this, the, the situation of things, and who have values to okay. add to what will make our country grow as a giant of Africa indeed. And that's talking about the constitution of his team now that will work with him. Yeah. But then I'll still like to backtrack and go back to this same issue of healing. And I, I just like we get a broader sense of um, where his head might be in, in terms of how he, he wants to bring Nigeria together to as a whole now. Uh, because, and you, 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 you would agree with me, during the election, take a place like Lagos, for instance, where there were ethnic tension you know uh, some people are alleging that some people are saying they can't come out to vote and uh, i mean i'm not saying these things are not associated with elections the world over i mean you go to some developed climes and then you see uh, maybe not ethnicity play out but then you see some sort of tension we saw what played out in the u.s uh, during the trump uh, biden we saw election what and played out we saw what yes, played well, out in india got. too yeah. but you know I, okay so it's not a, it's not peculiar to nigeria mm -hmm. some, but that's not the point the point is it was it was fierce, yeah. It, it was the tension was on, was palpable, and you you know people still fear even as no, I speak I, to I, you. I don't think no, no, but, but the fear. point is, and and this 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 is me putting it to you. The, the point is, we it, it's come to a time where we we people need to see themselves first as Nigerians before you know wherever your ethnic um, uh, nationality uh, lies, yes, yeah. where you're from. And what is the president-elect likely to do in this direction? That's exactly my question. I, I can assure you that for Asiwaju, he's a pan-Nigerian leader. Just check out the kind of people that worked with him when he was a governor, the kind of people that has been his associate till today. Mm. 
Asuaju does not look at people based on the other prisms that divide us. He doesn't deal with people based on religion. He doesn't deal with people based on, on ethnicity. He was the first governor in his set who brought in people who are not Yorubas, not even Lagosians, who are not Yorubas at all, into his cabinet, not as SA or PA, not just perfunctory dash, let's just let them just say we've done something. No. People having critical, we talk about Ben Akabweze now. He was holding one of the most critical positions as a commissioner. We had Atowari, we had so many other people who are not Yorubas in his cabinet. So what I'm saying is, Asiwaju is clearly a Pan-Nigerian leader. And I, I, I can now say it here without equivocation, that nobody should be afraid of Asiwaju's governance. Because he does not look at these small issues of ethnicity and religion. You know this man has been married to a Christian for 40 years. He never attempted to make her a Muslim. So why do anybody have any reason to fear this man? This was a man who, under his watch, the first chapel was built in uh, the government house in Marina. You can go check history. These are facts that are, that are in, the, in the public domain. So in terms of religion, in terms of ethnicity, Asiwaju's government is a government I mean, will be a government for every Nigerian, and I can assure people, whatever has played out in the election is gone. It's time to heal, and our president-elect, who will soon become our president in 35 days, will not use whatever happened in the election to, who do, I mean, to, to look out for anybody so or which, to like punish which people, which which hunt, any, using that word of witch hunt. No, no. <laughs> Asiwaju does not do that. He will not do that, and he has never been known. To do that, it is never recorded in his history as someone who which hunt people based on this primordial sentiment. So whatever happened in the election, and like you rightly said, it's a world, it's a global issue. We have even managed our own better. Americans are dealing with us. We saw what happened in India too. So anywhere you have all this multiplicity of people and uh, the divisions, people will always try to. Uh, use it to, to, to gain some, some uh, mileage. We know the people who are going to church saying, let's take back our church, take back your country. But after all this play and done, it is past now. It is time for us to move forward. Some of us who work for Asiwaju, I'm a Christian, for instance, doesn't, I have no fear about him. So Christians have no fear. non yorubas have no fear. Everybody have no fear under the presidency of Asiwaju. This is guaranteed. You know, uh, 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 some Minutes ago, you, you referenced the possible, likely um, criteria for cabinet constitution for the president-elect. You know, by law now, he has to have a cabinet in place. He, he has to in, have a cabinet in, in, in two place. months. Yes, 60 days as a matter of fact. Yes, that's why I said two by, months. By law, that's, that translates to two months. That's yeah. true. That's true. So you've already said, look, it will be a function of capacity. In terms of quality now, but I am wondering because he also has another structure that he also he also has to satisfy people who worked for him politically, and I mean that is not just a thing. Yeah, it's also a trend in every part of the world where democracy is is practiced. I mean, you also balance quality or capacity with political some Interest. sort of political patronage mm -hmm. or appointments. How does he plan to do that so that it's not lopsided? Uh, so I, that I, one I, side. I like uh, your question. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry. <laughs> I like your question. You know, you said something about Asiwaju. You said one of the greatest politicians in Nigeria, and I totally agree. No, with I you. did not say that. I said he has, he definitely has a deep understanding. A deep understanding. Okay, yes, yeah. of our yeah, politics. Yeah, that's even better. He understands oh. the quality because he I, will I know. Not campaigning for He will principal. know clearly. Well, you don't even need to campaign. He has won the election. He doesn't need anybody's <laughs> guy. Not even mine at this time. But clearly, this is a man who have understanding of the fact that look, I am coming into this place, coming to manage. An economy that is struggling, a people that are fighting each other who are not looking at. So he knows that he must hit the ground running. So he will know how not to jeopardize his presidency with political patronage. Of course, people who work deserve to be compensated one way or the other. However, it is big. Nigeria is bigger than the compensation of people who work. There are areas where you can compensate people, but when it comes to critical areas in terms of the economy, in terms of security, in terms of job creation, in terms of industrialization of Nigeria, in terms of production, I mean, building a productive capacity, I am sure Ashwaju will not look at LG's primordial sentiment. This will be filled by people who clearly will bring in value. There are areas where you can reward people because mm. they've worked, but there are also areas where Nigeria is the first reward it's that must be rewarded. Competency. So those areas will be managed by professionals who knows their onions and who can be trusted to deliver on the mandate that will be assigned to them.
I mean, we'll, 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 um, I, I have a feeling we'll begin to see some of these things play out in the next Yeah, those are the jobs that have been done. You know, he yes. traveled for a while. Clearly, they needed to sit down. They needed the clear head of people not coming to. You know how people pressure people. In fact, you remember the president say, I will leave you people in Nigeria if you disturb me when I leave. So clearly, we know that Nigerians can put pressure on people. So those are some of the reasons why I have to let travel. Me put you, let me put, put you on, on the pressure. spot. No, not, not on, well, let me put some. Let me put you. Lambda, yeah, we run away if no, you no, disturb no, me. No, 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 please. <laughs> any 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 thought to well any thought to what's been going around that the current speaker Femi Jabia Miller might become the chief of staff. I refuse to, to get involved in any them say them say. No, I'm just issue. saying you are an insider. I said I I'm refuse saying, to get heard, involved. Have you heard? You remember, anything? I'm going to quote what uh, Baba, Baba uh, our our current uh, our, our current minister of uh, Works and Housing said. He said it doesn't make sense to be making this kind of things on. Ashwaju will appoint who he believe <laughs> will give him the value. Yes. Uh, if you're asking me whether Baja Biamila, the right, right honorable speaker, is qualified, is qualified to he's far qualified to run that. However, I don't want to get involved in what doesn't concern me. Asiwaju knows who will do the job for him. I think he will do that appointment by himself without all these speculations causing unnecessary. We have had so many names. So, okay. But I, I don't think that is what is important. I believe Asiwaju will pick the right hand to help him succeed on the mandate that Nigerians, Nigerians have given unto him on February 25th. Uh, very well. You, you know, a minute ago, you also did say something to me that your principal does not need to campaign. Uh, he's won the election. He has won the election. And I agree. <laughs> but it, it, does, it would seem to some people that the, uh, until it was dissolved, the APC, PCC kept campaigning even after the election. No, no, is no. This, no. Is this, sorry, sorry, let me just land on this. Is this a product or is this by chance related to uh, what some or critics actually i'll be i'll be straightforward with you uh, critics of the president-elect says um he has some image a uh, crisis you know even associated that would be associated with his presidency going forward i mean how do you respond to people who say look uh, he might have won the elections he will be president come may 29 but then for, for as long as his presidency would last, he would have um, some image, uh, public image crisis. I, I don't think that is correct. You said that the PCC, before it was over, was campaigning because people thought he had. No. If, some, I, if, some if, I, if think, I come in here now yes. and say, oh, as Namdi is sitting on that seat, oh, he has shot on it and he didn't clean himself before, it's, will you not defend yourself? So people expect them to throw more at Asiwaju and then we will keep quiet. No, what the APC PCC is doing, and we will still do even though we've been dissolved, if anybody make a wrong allegation, we will defend him. So the fact that we are speaking does not mean we are afraid of anything. It only says we have to, like uh, my brother, uh, Fesas Kiyamo said recently, the Honorable Minister, he said you can't attack him, I expect us to keep quiet. People keep making up unnecessary and wrong information and allegations against him and they supposed to just keep quiet and let it roll. No. We are not campaigning. We have we have won the election. But people who keep going around making all these mundane allegations needed to be responded to and that is what we have been doing. Okay, so let's talk a bit about some um topical issue and <laughs> I, I mean, you, you, of course, you know that by June 13, if I'm not mistaken, June 13, that, that's correct, the National Assembly, the National Assembly would be inaugurated by, at the time, would be president. Um, President-elect would have already been... Become the president, then, yeah. So he would uh, subsequently promulgate the proclaim. Uh, the National okay, Defense yeah, National yeah. Assembly. But, but in already we've seen some of what is playing out already in, in terms of the struggle and tussle for leadership uh, positions in the National Assembly or both chambers of the National Assembly, whether for the Senate or for the House of Representatives. Uh, do you have some idea of where I the think, the, I, think a, is leaning? Yeah, I think there was a story about the governors making some recommendations about where each position should go, I mean, should go to or uh, come from. So if that story is true, then I see why you respect them because the governors... So is, is, were, like, is it leaning towards opening or zoning? To I, I, well, I have not said so, but I said there's a story about governors making a recommendation. Okay. And I said, if that is true, I see why you mm. respect it because you all saw the part the governors took. Yeah. And if the governors come together and say, this is what we think, I saw you reason along and then try you to make the right decision. Remember what played out in 2018? 
And no, that the... will not repeat it. It <laughs> won't repeat itself. We will ensure that uh, by the time we are going to the National Assembly, we already no, be, know what to do. If, if the president elect, um, uh, well, now chooses to play some back role, and uh, don't you think that would affect the No, 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 no. See, what, what, what we, we, uh, don't we, you think he needs to take a decision? Can I, can I ask you, can I tell you something? You remember in, the, in this election, APC was the only party that went to the election as a unified f house. Other, if they don't have G5, they have breakaway, they have their light party. Well, well, that's we're opinion. the only party. Others will say they were united as well. <laughs> they were united. That's why they had three of them fighting for the same position. And then they are now complaining that they lost election. But we went to the that election, a, 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 I mean, a united house. I can assure you that unity will be preserved. And whatever decision will be arrived at in terms of the National Assembly uh, uh, positioning, it will be arrived at in a way that will be fair and just to everybody and equitable. Uh, very, so quickly before, very quickly before I let you go, I, and I know you've talked about this earlier on when we started our conversation at the top, uh, you talked about um, how it would incorporate young persons into yeah. this government. I mean, so you see better prospects for young... Um, no, no, I don't just see better prospects. I see an excellent uh, prospect for Nigerian young people under okay. this government. He has said it in private, he has said it in public. You remember the day he, he was taking his, uh, his uh, certificate even his speech, 60% of it was, dev it was devoted to the young people. So I can assure Nigerian youth, under Asiwaju, you have a great and a better deal. Ayobami or Yellow One, APC Strongman. He still remains APC <laughs> Strongman and member Media and Publicity Committee, Directorate, I should say, of the now defunct APC PCC. I'd like to thank you so much for coming on our program thank you, tonight. Thank you for having It's me. been a pleasure having you here. Uh, thank you so much. And congratulations, by the way. Thank you so much. And that's it for tonight. We'll see you again Wednesday, the same, no, not same time, I beg your pardon, at 10 and 30 p.m. on Wednesday night for another fresh episode of The Mandate. My name is Nnamdi Odipo. See you then. Put the white shots. Put the big shots. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we can be gisting like, uh, uh, just like uh, that's okay. why I'm trying to relax. Yeah. So I mean, like, uh, it is real, like, it's yeah. like, I go to put.